Hello, my name is Michael Ivaliotis, and welcome to another VI Shots tutorial. In this episode, we'll learn how to avoid the common problems that arise when building executables that use dynamic VIs. As we've learned back in VI Shots video episode number three, when building executables that use dynamic VIs, you must make sure to specify the dynamic VI name in the Always Include section of the LabVIEW Application Builder specification. Not doing this will cause problems such as LabVIEW applications that won't be able to load your dynamic VI and will either raise errors or cause the application to fail completely. It really depends on how critical your dynamic VI is to the overall application. Making special considerations for dynamic VIs during the build process is an extra step which can lead to a point of failure. If you create a new dynamic VI in your code, then you must remember to update the build spec. Sometimes you are not in control of the build process. For example, your code may be distributed as a toolkit in VI form that others use to build their own applications with. In this video tutorial, I will show a simple way to avoid the problem of always having to specify your dynamic VI during the build process. All you have to do is follow two simple coding modifications that I'll show you. The example I'm using is a date server. This date server supplies the date and time to multiple clients. It waits for a connection on a specific server port. In this case, it's 6341. When a client makes a connection to this server, this dynamic VI called date server reentrant handler VI runs dynamically. The connection reference gets passed to the VI using the control value set method, which we described in a previous tutorial, and the run VI method to actually execute the VI. Let's take a look at the dynamic VI. On the diagram, we see that the input connection is used and a TCP write is performed to write the date and time which has been flattened to a string to the client VI or the client connector. That could either be another LabVIEW VI or it could be uh, some other program connecting to that port. Let's run the code to see how it works. We run the date server and here I've created two clients called client one and client two. And if I run these now, you'll see that the date gets delivered here. And if I run this one, the date gets delivered here. I can even open a terminal. And here we have uh, a telnet session. So I can say telnet to my local host, 6341. And now it opens a connection. And you can see the date and time gets served up as well to this connector. This example demonstrates the use of reentrant VIs where you don't know ahead of time the number of connections that could possibly occur. Let's take a look at the build specification. If I open it up and we look at the source files, we'll see that we have the startup, the startup VI defined as our date server. But our dynamic VI called date server reentered handler is not specified in the always included section. If I build this VI, we'll see that it won't work correctly. I run the executable, and here it is, the executable running. If I run the clients, we'll see that they don't work. This is because the dynamic VI isn't included, and somewhere internally in the date server, um, it causes an error, and we don't see that error. Let's stop the server, go into our build specification, and now we'll include this VI. Now, by default, when you do this manually, if you go into your source file settings, you'll see that LabVIEW has, for this dynamic VI, has actually disabled the remove front panel checkbox. So this will guarantee that the dynamic VI not only is included, but it also has its front panel intact. Now, if we build it, and now we run this executable, we'll see that we run our clients, they get the data correctly. Now I will show you how to create a successful build even though you don't have the dynamic VI specified in the always include section. If we open up the date server, and here where we specify our dynamic VI path, we'll use something else called a static VI reference. If we go to programming, Application control, static VI reference, and plop that down. We can 
take our dynamic VI and drag it into that icon. We can delete this constant. And here we can create a property of the VI path. Wire up the static VI reference, and then we can wire the path from the property output. Connect all our air wires. So now what we have is a static VI reference, and then from the reference we use a property node to get the path to the VI, and we wire that path into the OpenVI reference function. What the static VI reference allows us to do is to place a VI on the diagram of, a, of the caller, but not actually execute the VI. So when LabVIEW comes along, even though it's in, the, it's in the hierarchy, it's in the call chain, it won't actually execute and run this VI. All it is is a static VI reference that will come out of here, and we can use that reference to read certain properties from the VI. And one thing we're reading here is the path to the VI, and then we get that path and do an open VI reference. The benefit of this is that LabVIEW now thinks that this VI is in the call chain, and when it goes to build the application, it will pull that VI into the executable. Now, one more thing that we have to do when using this implementation is that we have to somehow tell the builder that it needs to keep the front panel of the VI intact and not actually remove the front panel because a dynamic VI must have its front panel in order to be called and executed correctly. There are two ways that we can do this. Let's take a look at the dynamic VI. One way to do this is we can look at the VI properties and we can enable the checkbox show front panel when called. Now this is a little confusing because when the dynamic VI runs, it will, it will not actually show us front panel because as we know, when you use the run VI method, this property is actually ignored. But what this is, is a signal to the builder that this front panel must be kept intact. Another way that we can do the same uh, thing is to actually put a control reference on the diagram of the VI. For example, what we can do here is right click on the string and say create reference put that anywhere on the diagram. We can wire it up if we want. And now the builder will also see this control reference during the build process and it will say, hey, I have to keep that front panel because you actually are using that front panel. Now this may be a little confusing for other people trying to read your code that they probably won't understand why you have a control reference on the diagram when you're not really using it for anything. So it's a good idea to put a, a note here or a comment explaining why this control reference is here in the first place. Otherwise, if someone later on removes this, then again, you lose your front panel. So let's close this VI and go into our build specification. And now in our source files, we'll remove this VI from the always include section. Let's remove that. Double check the source file settings. and say remove front panel. So now, the front panel here is specified to be removed using the default settings. Now if we build it, and now we execute this new built VI, open up one of our clients, run it, and voila, we'll see that it works just as expected. And if we double check our build specifications, we'll see that our source files still, that dynamic VI is not included. And our source file settings, we'll see that, hey, there's a small change here. So during the build process, what happened was LabVIEW went through and noticed that a dynamic VI had a control reference on the diagram, uh, or it had in the properties to show front panel when called. And then what it did is it toggled this setting so that the front panel is not removed during the build process. There is an important note that needs to be mentioned. Static VI references will cause LabVIEW to load the dynamic VI into memory when the calling VI is loaded. So you should not use this implementation if you want to defer loading of the dynamic VI. Let's summarize. Use static VI references to force application builder to include your dynamic VI. Include a control reference or set show front panel when called to keep the front panel during the build. And finally, don't use static VI references when you do not want to load the dynamic VI into memory on application startup.
Thank you for watching this video. Remember that all the code shown is available for download on the VI Shots website. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and gave you some ideas that you can use in your own LabVIEW software development. Thank you and bye for now.